Matthew chapter 11. When Jesus had finished giving, <laughs> welcome to God Chasers. This is what we do. We, we not really like a church, we more like a family. And so we just, we have family time, amen. Amen, amen. I love everybody though. <laughs> amen. All right. When Jesus had finished giving them instructions, he departed from there to teach and preach in their cities. Mm, this ain't it. Luke chapter 11. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm looking for something else. I, I heard the Lord. He told me to change it. I, I can't look at my notes because I don't got this note. <laughs> this is not it. That's it. Here we go. Luke chapter 11. See, you got to know your Bible. You know, sometimes you don't have that, uh, you don't have an app. <laughs> you don't know your Bible. You'll be... <laughs> I'll be like, I intended to preach that. Okay. <laughs> and it happened while Jesus was praying in a certain place. Somebody say a certain place. Certain place. Somebody say a certain place. a certain place. Where's your certain place? Where's your certain place of prayer? Where's the place that you know you go to to pray? I would, I, I'd like to say right here, if you don't have a certain place, you don't pray that much. Yeah, yeah, we're going to eat our vegetables today. If you don't have a certain place, you don't pray that much. If there's not a place where you go to, where you, where you lock everybody out, where you lock out all the noise, where you lock out all the interruption, where you, where, where you turn off your cell phone, God forbid. Jesus went to a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, somebody say, Lord. Teach us how to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We love you. We give you the glory and honor. Lord, help me help them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. High five three people and say, he surrounded me. He surrounded me. He surrounded me. Ooh, I got to figure this thing out. Bother me. I got him. I got him. All right, have your seats. Amen. All right, beautiful. So, 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 so we get the disciples and they're talking to Jesus and they say, Lord, teach us how to pray. Guys, I'm going to ask for my other mic back. Um, I'm going to be messing with this thing all day. I'm going to be, we're going to fix it. Amen. <laughs> we'll get there. Okay. Can y'all hear me? <laughs> look, look, my dad, when my dad is preaching, you know, he preached the first part with the lapel mic. This is hilarious. And then when he get to where he want to go, he say, Bring me my hammer. <laughs> I just think that's funny, man. No, bring me my hammer. So Kevin brought me my hammer. Thank you, man. Thank you for the hammer. Okay, so, so Jesus is talking to his disciples. He's hanging out with his disciples. And the disciples say something so interesting, Quentin. They say, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Jesus, teach us how to pray. Now, why is this interesting, Pastor Dante? Why is this? Well, because this would have been a weird statement to ask. Often, a lot of the disciples, a lot of disciples come from commercial backgrounds, right? So they, they're fishermen and they're carpenters. But uh, many of the disciples, they came up in the Jewish tradition. They came up in the Jewish tradition. They came up training to learn how to be a priest. In fact, if you were born in, 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 uh, around that time, the first century Judaism, if you were born around that time, the first 14 years of your life, you spent learning the Torah, learning how to read the Bible. The Torah is the first five books of the Bible. You would spend that time learning the Torah, learning how to read the Bible, le learning how to engage God, learning how to pray learning how to speak, and, and by 14, they sort of decide, okay, this person is supposed to go into the priesthood. So then you would move into the track for the priesthood. Or this person is supposed to, you know, learn how to fish or something. Not fit for the priesthood, amen. Some of y'all should have said amen on that. You was like, nah, I wasn't 14. Nah, play, I wasn't fit for the priesthood. <laughs> but, but most of them would have had an experience with a rabbi, an experience with a teacher. They would have spent time in, in the priesthood. And, and so we could conclude that they would have known 
how to pray. Somebody say, teach us how to pray. They would have known how to pray. They would have they known how to pray. They would have had experience with prayer. Somebody say, teach us how to pray. And so, and so they, they find themselves asking Jesus this weird question. Now, I want to help you with something else that you might not see in the text. You'd never ask somebody for their expertise on something you've never seen them do. I'm a, because a lot of y'all be asking for expertise. Oh, man. From people who ain't never did what you aspiring to do. Can I just help a little bit? I'm, I'm, I'm a preach. I promise. I'm a preach. It's going to be biblical. I promise. But well, it's so many uh, poor righteous teachers in social media these days. Some of y'all was born in the 80s. That hit you real good. You was like, yeah, absolutely. It's so many poor righteous teachers that, that are on social media these days offering advice for things that they're not qualified to do. They'll tell you what to do with your bank account, not qualified. They'll tell you what car to buy, not qualified. They'll tell you who to marry, not qualified. Oh, man, you just do me a favor. Just put on social media. Don't put nothing else. Don't even check in. Just hashtag not qualified. <laughs> not qualified. There's so many people who are trying to teach you things that they're not qualified to teach you. And I would that if you just took a little bit of time, spent a little bit of time paying attention to the person that you're asking for information, paying attention to their life, paying attention. How do they handle their money? How do they do with their cars? Do they live where I want to live? Do they drive what I want to drive? Maybe you should pay more attention to the teacher and less attention to the social thing that's happening around them. Are y'all with me today? That's, that's, that's as deep as I'm willing to go today, but I could go deeper. Because we're putting a lot of focus on people for what they do and not how they live. I'm, 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 a, I'm an 80s baby, 90s baby. How you living? How you living? How you living? Yeah, that's what I want to know before the show starts. Before the show start, how you living? Some of y'all, that's just, yeah, that's, you, you can't say what. You have no idea where I'm going to. That's, that's what, this is the term anachronistic. It's anachronistic. It doesn't fit in the time frame in which you understand. Okay, so, so, <laughs> but there was a show called In Living Color. And before, yeah, now, yeah. <laughs> but, but before the show started, there was, a, there was just this little refrain that just said, how, how you living? Sometimes before you take advice, how you living? Yeah. Hey, before you comment on my life, how, how you living? Before you ask me when I'm going to have a kid, how you living? Before you say, man, what you need to be doing is investing in, uh, what was that thing everybody was investing? B Bitcoin. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Everybody was getting rich off like, all these po entrepreneurs. We have a multicultural church. I'll be careful. <laughs> Poor righteous teachers. Man, I'm in Bitcoin right now, man. I got I to gotta try to get it out. It's, see, but, but I'm getting somewhere. I want to make sure that you, whoever you're taking advice from, and I, I, I'm not saying I'm perfect. Not at all. Not by a long shot. Some of y'all know me, know me. <laughs> but what I'm saying is I live it. And what, and how they refer to Jesus, let me get off me before y'all get mad. Well, and they refer to Jesus, they say, well, he, he lives this. So maybe he knows something about God that we don't know about God. Have you ever been around somebody who could pray, like who could pray in such a way that made you think you never met God in the first place? <laughs> you ever been around somebody? I used to have, I used to have a mother in the faith, boy. <laughs> Sister Janice, Sister Janice could pray, she could pray in tone. You know, when you can pray in tone, like it's sort of singing, praying at the same time. It just sounds so beautiful. It got to sound beautiful to God because it sounds beautiful to me. And she, and she used to pray in such a way that made me say, Lord Jesus, I don't know how to pray. I need to figure out how to learn how to pray, how Sister Janice pray. When Sister Janice pray, God move. 
When Sister Janice, bro, you can't just be sitting around all dead, Church of the Frozen Chosen. You can't just be sitting around like all dead. When, when Sister Janice get up and pray, she say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Move in the room today. See how y'all sitting there like that? Y'all done, y'all never been under that anointing. If you had sat under that anointing, you'd be like, yeah, Father. Everything would have started shaking. Musicians would have like, But there's some people who can pray in such a way. There's some people who can just pray in such a way that everything moves, that everything shakes. And today, today, I want to talk to you about prayer. In fact, if you need a title for today, today, today's message is titled Surrounded, Surrounded, Pray Around It. Okay? Surrounded. We did every message was surrounded. First, we started with what? Dig, dig around it. Were y'all here? Okay, first we started with dig around it. Then what else? Then build around. Oh, y'all so good. Well, we raised in the church right here, Ken. <laughs> then it was what? Build around it? Okay, what was after build around it? Praise around it? Yeah, there's one or two people paying attention. The rest of y'all was like, ah. And the third one is pray around it. Now, Pastor Dante, why would you do praise before prayer? I'll help you. Jesus taught us this. He said, when you pray, pray like this. Now, understand something. That Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11 is a continuation or it's a retelling of Matthew chapter 6. Some of y'all know Matthew chapter 6. You don't think you know it. But as soon as I say, our Father who art in heaven. Look at that, boy. Y'all some bibliotician. Look, you don't want to stop. I know these. Let's keep it going, PD. Let's keep it going. I know this one. I know this one. PD, I know this one. Keep it up. Give us this day. But Luke 11 is a continuation of, of, of our retelling of Matthew chapter 6, in which Jesus is literally teaching us how to pray. Now, in Luke chapter 11, they say, Lord, how do you pray? In Matthew chapter 6, that's the prayer that we remember. That's a prayer that we've, that we, that we've taken into our spirit. But Jesus, he, they never asked Jesus for a prayer to say. Jesus said, pray like this. We turned that into say this prayer. It was never intended that we should just say this prayer. It was intended that we should pray like this. Somebody say pray like this. So he gives them an example. And the first example he says is our father, our father. Somebody say our father. That creates a relationship where there was none. I want you to understand this. That when you talk to God, you need to talk to him like you belong to him. He's not up there and you're down here. No, he, he is my close relative. He is connected to me. Listen, you'll start praying more when you realize God cares about your prayers. Y'all not ready for church today. You'll start praying more. See, the reason you don't pray as much is because you think God don't care. But he said, when you start, start right here. Our father, he belongs to me, I belong to him. Who would go to a, a, a father, a good, good father, and that father not respond to the prayers of their child? Our father, who are, now, now, understand that this is Jesus, the Christ. And he's telling you that you have the same relationship to his father that he does. Before Paul ever written that we were going to be raised up, joint heirs with him, that we were going to be a part of, a, of an heirship, of a kingship, Jesus already said, you, you, you get it too. You get it too. You connected, I'm connected. Our Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven. Yes, yes, yes. I believe that there is some supernatural part of this. Who not on earth. You got, why would you pray to anything that was on earth? Man, I'm going to start dealing with some of y'all's, oh, Jesus. I'm going to start dealing with some of y'all's stuff, praying to these religions that are on earth, that are earth-based, praying, praying to a, a Buddha. That thing ain't no higher than I am. Why would I pray to something that wasn't even higher than I am? 
praying to the wind, praying to all these earthly things. When God said, no, 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 I'm in heaven. Can you recognize the power that's all? Jesus? Can you recognize that there is something greater than you and that you are alive with a purpose? God has purpose for your life. Our Father who art in heaven. And then he says something, hallowed be thy name. What's that mean? Lord, you're great. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, we magnify you in the temple. We, Lord, we, we praise you. You are, the, you are the most high God. You are the greatest thing to ever live. Before I go to God at all, I'm, I'm just going to start with God. You are great. You are wonderful. You are super duper. Hallowed be thy name. And then we say thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Whatever is happening in heaven, I want it to happen on earth. If there is no sickness in heaven, I don't want to be sick on earth. If there is no broke people in heaven, I don't want to be broke on If there is no sadness in heaven, then I don't want to be sad on earth. I want my earth as it is in heaven. Now, some of y'all, that's where you, you it's, it falters. Hey, wait, God, what? You know, I, I sort of believe, but if I'm going to take the time to pray to an invisible God that's in heaven, then I'm going to believe that he can do some supernatural things in my life. Are y'all with me today? I'm still in my introduction, by the way. Y'all get, what's the score? No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Da -da -na, da -da -na. Okay, so... So, so he says, uh, uh, give, us, uh, give us this day our daily bread. Now, the problem with a lot of us is that we start our prayers right there. <laughs> we start our prayers at give. Lord Jesus, um, I just, you, you know how much I need this raise. If you could just, if you could just take me from, Oh, somebody said it right. From here to there. It don't matter. <laughs> here to there. <laughs> so if you could just take me from here to there. That's how I'm going to start praying. I don't know where there is, but I know where here is, and I don't like it. From here to there. <laughs> if you could just Yeah, from uh, from ten dollars to twelve dollars, from from twelve dollars to fourteen dollars, from fourteen dollars to 15. if you could just take and we start right there when God says you 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 missed the whole, you missed the. It was a whole obstacle course before you could get to this place where you can ask to give. Now, if you go through that space, then you're qualified to say give. Okay, because a lot of times we preach that we don't hold oh, you. You know, whatever the Lord wills, no. No, he said he would give me the desires of my heart. My heart desires some things, but I just know how to approach him in the right way. Are y'all with me today? You got to know how to approach him in the right way. And then, and then, and then you can ask for your daily bread. Now, he says, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Now, I'm good with this. Most people start their prayer with forgive me. And that's, and that's totally fine, even though it, when Jesus taught it, he said, he said, no, you, you don't have to start by begging. You can start by relationship. You don't have to start by begging. You can start by relationship. Now, we want you to ask for forgiveness. We want you to understand that you are a sinner saved by grace. And you, you, we want you to understand that whenever you come to God, you're not worthy to ask him for a thing. But you start with relationship. Now, I want to show you something else that you might have missed right there. He said, and forgive us our sins. Forgive us our debts. Well, sometimes I like it better when it's debts. Forgive us our debts. Because I got some debts I need forgiving. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who, we, who owe us debts. Oh, the key word there is. As, as I forgive, forgive me. As I forgive, forgive me. Some of y'all haven't been forgiven because you haven't forgiven. You want God to bless you while you're mad at such and such. You want God to bless you and you still heard about that 
You want God to do it for you and you won't do it for somebody else. You want God to, listen, you want God to bless you with a $2 raise and somebody owe you $5 and you mad as smoke about it. But if you learn how to forgive debts, maybe you'll get your debts forgiven. That's what we call a smattering of applause. Right? But they've been owing me for a long time. You've been owing God for a long time. Every time you think about what somebody owes you, think about what you owe. Okay, no, sit, sit, sit down. It's, it's early. It's early still. It's early still. <laughs> so, 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 he says, forgive us our debts as we forgive those who, de- who, 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 as we forgive those who owe us a debt. Right? Okay. And then he says, and lead us not into temptation. What's that mean, Pastor Dante? Well, uh, watch my walk. Help me. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. See, because something about you said go this way. Something about, (laughs) something in your spirit. It's called sin nature. That's a different message. We'll preach it later. Okay. It's something in your spirit that says touch the wet paint. You'll never touch that wall right there. You'll never touch that wall till we put a big sign on and say, do not touch. Let me be over there. (laughs) Sin nature, man. Sin nature. Adam had an entire garden full of the most beautiful fruit that ever made. I want to, man, I wish I had I need you to understand this. Everything that Adam tasted, he was tasting for the first time. I kind of get to that place in your revelational walk that every time I read the word, it's like I tasted it for the first time. And nobody on the planet ever tasted it like I tasted. Preachers, get this in your heart, that nobody on the planet will digest the word in the same way that you digest it. And nobody will be able to regurgitate it in the way that you regurgitate it. But you got to spend time... Oh, taste and see that the, oh, Jesus. So, 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 so Adam had all the pick of all the fruit in the garden, but he still had to choose the one that said, do not touch. Wet fruit, (laughs) do not touch. He still, he had to go find that one. And all of sin, all of creation, uh, 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 all of creation has been shamed because Adam couldn't keep his hands off the one thing. All your family's messed up because you couldn't keep your hands off the one. The whole unit is broken because you couldn't keep your hands off the one. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then you give it back to him. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen just means what? I agree. Amen. Amen. And so, and so Jesus gives us this beautiful prayer. He gives us this beautiful prayer so that we can understand prayer. Now, if you don't understand that prayer, you won't understand how to pray. Does that make sense? So I want you to, I'm going to give you just a couple of points about prayer that I want you to remember. Because if you get these points, if you internalize these points, then I believe that you'll be able to pray like Jesus said to pray. Are y'all with me today? Are y'all with me today? Are y'all with me today? Okay, the first thing I want you to do is I, 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 I want you to pray with purpose. Somebody say pray with purpose. Pray with purpose. I want you to pray with purpose. When was the last time you just prayed with purpose? I, I'm just praying with purpose. I have a desire to see God bless my life. I have a desire to see God do something crazy, radical in my life. And so I'm just going to pray with purpose. I'm going to pray like it matters. I'm going to pray like like there's something behind my prayer. When was the last time you just prayed with purpose? I'm not even talking about frequency. I'm talking about purpose. I'm not, even, I'm not even talking about length of prayer because, you see, we get this whole thing messed up because, you know, I know people who just pray for hours. I know people. I, I, I love it. My, my, you know, my mom is a prayer warrior. She'll just pray for hours. She'll just, she'll, she just used to be on her knees just, oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus. I bind the devil in this place. I bind the I used to be thinking, man, I don't want to be saved. If I got to do this for t- 
No, I'm just, oh, y'all just, I told y'all I was, I thought, y'all, and y'all sanctified. Y'all got it all. No, I was, I was like, oh, no, I don't, I can't do it. Ramon, I'm not made for it. I'm not built. I'm not built how she built. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus. Like, I'm not built the same way. But, but, but it's not about frequency. It's not about frequency. It's, it's about purpose. It's about purpose. Because when you get to the point where, it, 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 when you understand that it's about purpose, then you will pray more frequently. The reason you, the frequency messes you up is because you don't have a purpose behind it. So when you just get down on your knees saying some stuff that you heard somebody else say, then you, next thing you know, you sleep. It's only been three minutes. Like the devil show is busy. No, 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 no. You're not praying with purpose. Remember the last time you was really in trouble? Remember the last time you was really like, I'm, I'm, I mean, maybe y'all can't get it. Maybe, I'm, maybe y'all won't get this. But I remember some times when I was like, Pastor Adriana, I remember some times when I was in trouble, trouble, trouble. I was praying with intensity and purpose. Well, I remember some, back in 1996. Tabitha Banks called me, and she was Tabitha Armstead. She said, uh, hey, uh, we might be pregnant. We. <laughs> no, she said, she said, we, we might be, we might be pregnant. I was like, okay, well, you know, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll, <laughs> whew. Marika, am I lying? Am I lying? I'm not lying. Whew. All right. Well, we, you know, it'll be fine. Let's just, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just see God. <laughs> see what happens. Well, I hung up that phone. I sounded like my mama. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. Lord, we believe you're going to do a new work in here. God, we... Something about purpose will change the way you pray. Something about purpose will change the way you pray. You'll, you'll start singing songs you never sung before. Oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes for it reaches. <laughs> when you pray with intensity and purpose, all of a sudden, something starts rearing up on the inside of you. And, and oftentimes, we, don't, we, 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 we fall out in prayer. We go to sleep in prayer because we're not praying with purpose. We're not praying with intensity. But I want to pray every single day with intensity. I want to pray every single day with fire. Can, can one of y'all get my phone, please? Can one of y'all get my phone? I, need my, I made some extra notes that I don't, I don't seem to have here. Uh, I, I, I pray every day with it. Anybody could do it. Anybody could do it. Any, anybody could do it. <laughs> so I, want you, I want you to get to the place in your life where you pray with intensity. Somebody say pray with intensity. But you won't pray with intensity until you pray with purpose. What am I praying for? What am I praying for? I want you to just, before you pray, just, bef excuse me, before you pray, I want you to just get five or six things in your head and say, this is what I'm about to pray about. This is what, this is what I'm about to pray about. And then just, and then just seek God for that. Start in a place where you say, I'm going to pray with purpose. Somebody say, pray with purpose. Come on, dog. You walking like you don't got an assignment. Come on. Walking like, all right. So, 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 somebody say, I'm going to pray with purpose. The second thing I want you to do is pray with passion. Somebody say, pray with passion. Okay, passion will come from purpose. Are y'all with me today? Passion will come from purpose. But if you don't pray about what you care about, then you won't have the... If you don't pray about what you care about, then you won't have the compassion to be passionate. Are y'all with me? 
If you don't pray about what you care about, you won't have the compassion to be passionate in your prayer life. Does that make sense? Are y'all with me today? Okay, so you, you got to figure out, okay, how can I pray with passion? What does that look like? Well, for some people, it does look like a, a, a loud cry. The Bible says, cry out unto the Lord. I cried out unto the Lord, and he heard my prayer. He, he, he brought recompense. Lord have mercy. I don't know what it means, but I want it. Give, it, give me some, <laughs> some recompense. I'd like some recompense. Lord, can I please have some recompense that Pastor Dante was talking about today? <laughs> If I, if, I, if I cry out to the Lord with, with passion, then I know he will hear me. I told y'all last week about my, about, uh, about my wife, how she was so keen to my children's cry that she could understand that in a room full of crying babies, she knew which one was hers. I'm telling you that God feels like that about you. And in, in, in a world full of crying individuals, God will hear your cry. You don't understand how much God loves you, how much God cares about you, how compassionate. The Bible says that the hairs on your head are numbered. That does not mean that he knows how many hairs are on your head. It means each one has an ID, a ID number. If your hairs have an ID number, do you not think your God knows who you are? Can you take 30 seconds and just thank God that if my hairs have an identity, then I have an identity. If the hairs on my head have an ID number, then I have an identity in God. God knows who you are. So if I pray with passion, the next thing is to do is to pray with persistence. I'm almost done here. The next thing to do is to pray with persistence. Somebody say with persistence. What does that mean, Pastor Dante? It means keep on. What's the shortest verse in the Bible? Y'all so good. <laughs> the shortest verse in the Bible says Jesus wept. He cried out. He cried out to God. He wept. He wept out loud. Now, the, the second shortest verse in the Bible. I, I'm failing. I'm not a good preacher. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The second shortest verse in the Bible. Y'all ready for this? Pray without. So the first one, Jesus wept. I think they're short so you can learn them. First one, Jesus wept. The second one, pray without ceasing. What's that mean to pray without ceasing? Well, here, here we go. I'll give y'all an analogy. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, you know dating this girl named Tabitha and she was cute she had a white girl name so that was something that, that was like that was another level of cuteness that was a, what's your girlfriend name Tabitha Boy, that's a, anyway okay all right all right forgive me anyway um but but I I, I, I was I was I, I used to call her on the phone and I, I was putting my best you know, Mac Daddy game down. You know, I was putting my rap down. Y'all don't even know. I was. I gave up that game a long time ago. I, I passed it to my son. I said, "Okay, hey." Oh, not Dominique the, the Sabo. No, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm trying to protect him. He married now. You can't. You gotta pass it down when you get married, son. You gotta just. Mm. All right, so a little, little, little dummy coming through, then we pass it down to him. Okay. That's one more time. <laughs> so, so look, 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 look. So, 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 look. So, <laughs> I'm on the phone. I'm putting down my best, like, you know, I'm trying to, yeah, you know, girl, girl, you don't even know how much I love you, man. If you just... Let me count the ways. I'm just, you know what I mean? I'm just going to, yeah. And I would be doing that for so long. Maybe I wasn't that good at it because eventually she'll fall asleep. We'll just be on the phone for so long and she'll just fall asleep. That's it. Man. You know, maybe she'll wake up a little bit. she say, you, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. And maybe I'll fall asleep. She'll wake up. I say, you still there? Whatever. Okay, we go back and forth. This is what prayer with God looks like. It looks like a phone conversation that doesn't end. It's a consistent 
phone conversation. A, a, a preacher named Smith uh, Wigglesworth said it like this. He said, he said, I've never prayed for more than 20 minutes, but I've never gone more than 20 minutes without praying. So it's not about longevity, it's about persistence. I'm just going to persistently seek the Lord. The Bible says to ask, seek, and knock. I would turn there, but like, pray go. Uh, d- d- he said, ask, seek, and knock. It's, it's, not, it's not linear. It's progressive. It's not linear. It's not ask, seek, and knock. It's ask. Then I get through that door, but now I got to seek. And then I get through that door and I say, Jesus, Lord, I need you right here. Lord, I need you to come through right here. Lord, if you don't do it, it ain't going to get done. And and I got to get through those doors so I can get to the next place in God. Where I know he'll hear my cry. I got to be persistent. I don't have to pray for 20 minutes, but every 20 minutes or so I have to say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I, 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 I need you in my life. Lord, I, I, I need you. Help me, help me make a better decision. Lord, you, Lord, you know I don't like Eileen. No, Eileen's in here, right? I'm just trying to, we're going to make up something else. You know I don't like Eileen. See, y'all think you can't pray to God, but prayer literally just means to speak with God. The truth is, God already know you don't like Eileen. You're just making a public confession of what's already. Say, you know, I don't like Eileen. Help me to be nicer to her. Instead of praying, help her car to just not work no more. That's not a prayer. That's a root. That's a root. You put your, doing some wicked. You're doing a word curse on people. No, you pray to God to say, help me, change me, fix me, do it in me. God, I need you to do something in me. And watch what God, watch how quickly your world changes when you start changing. Watch how quickly you keep praying for external things to change. But when you start praying for internal things to change, external things will automatically start shifting around in your life. Ask me how I know. I started praying for me to change. See, some of us, we, we, don't, we have drive-through faith. You got drive-through faith. You go up to the drive-through and you tell God your order. God, I like a McNugget sandwich. I don't know what y'all order. I don't know what y'all be ordering. And I ain't going to tell y'all what I be ordering so y'all can make fun of me. That's a, so McNugget sandwich it is. Unless you order McGrill. If you order McGrill, okay, I'm not going. All right. Anyway. <laughs> come back, come back, come back. Okay, come back. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Okay. But you have drive through faith. You pull up to God, you give him your order, and then you just wait in the window. Now, oftentimes, just like the actual drive through if, the, if they don't respond in enough time, what you do? That's what you do in your faith. If God doesn't respond in enough time, I I made my order. I made my order. I said I want him to be this tall, and I want him to make at least 80K, and I want him to drive this car. God and I, I'm, I'm waiting now. I'm waiting. I made my order. And you get so impatient that you just, I can do it myself. I could get in myself. I could get my. When the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up when we. Let's just start right there. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew what? Why are you always tired? Because you ain't waiting. When you working and not waiting, you're going to always be exhausted. When you working and not wait, I'm trying to do it myself, build it myself, get it myself. If I could just keep doing all this stuff and then you turn into a broke wizard of Oz. Because you're trying to make something happen when God says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Stop trying to work it out. God already worked it out. Be patient. Some of us, this, I've been in the drive through before, made my order and realized I didn't. 
I didn't have the funds necessary for what I asked for. I didn't, some of y'all, that'll, that'll get you later in the car. I didn't have the funds. I didn't have, I didn't have what it took to, to, to get what I was asking God for. Some of y'all praying for things you can't handle yet. We talked about it. We talked about it. We talked about it. <laughs> we talked about it. Some of y'all praying for things you can't handle yet. You got to get into the place. You got to get into the place where you say, okay, God, now I want what you want for me. I want what you want for me. So I'm willing to wait for it. So I'm willing to wait for it. I want to give you my last one. Um, pray with power. Somebody say pray with power. I want you to pray with purpose. Purpose. I want you to pray with passion. I want you to pray with persistence. I want you to pray with power. Pastor Dante, what's that mean? I already said I was praying with passion. Listen, I want to help you with something. This will help you at church too. Passion is not power. Ooh, Mama Connie. I preached that one right there. Passion is not power. Just because somebody's screaming at you, spitting on you, yelling all crazy, that don't mean nothing going to change in your life. You need somebody with power. You need somebody with power. You need somebody with power. It's not about yelling and screaming. In the Bible, everybody who was yelling and screaming was crazy. Now, get it in, don't get it twisted. I, I love a good yell and scream. I, I grew up with a good yell and scream. And I knew people who could yell and scream but had power behind it. I just want you to know the difference between somebody who's passionate and somebody who has power. Just because you got a good preaching voice does not mean you have, oh, Lord. I just be losing friends by the day, boy. <laughs> but I want to help you. Just because you got a good preaching voice or you can tune up or do all this stuff if you don't got no power. I don't want to hear it. I need, the, I need the power. I need, when you pray, I need things to change in my life. When you make a sound, I want something to change in my life. I want something. Can you help me, minister, teacher, preacher, evangelist? Can you help me? When you pray, will things change? It doesn't just sound good. I want you to pray with passion, but I also want you to pray with power. Now, how do I get power? Oh, hear me, hear me right here. There, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the. Okay, get this. There's power, power, wonder working power. Where? In the, in the precious blood of the Lamb. So that means I got to identify something that's not in me in order to access power that I don't have. I got to identify that the power is in the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, this is an extra step of faith. It, uh, Trevor, it takes the first step of faith to get down on your knees and to pray to something that you don't even know if you believe in. It takes, a, it takes a fervent man to get down on his knees and say, okay, God, I don't even know if you're real. Help me right here. Help me. I, I, I'm confused about my life. I'm confused about what's going on. Help me, God. I, I, I need your strength. I need your power. I need your blood. Help me. Help me. Help me, Jesus. And then the Bible says, that he, I prayed, I, I called out to the Father, and he did what? He answered me. He heard my cry, and he answered me. Okay, now, when he answered you the first time, when he answered you the second time, when he answered you the third time, see, this is why you don't have power. You haven't built up enough. You haven't banked up enough. <laughs> you haven't earned. I don't want to say earned because it's not, it's not about your works. It's about his works in you. But, but, but you don't have enough built up faith on the inside of you to get what you need from God. You really don't believe what you're praying. But what you have to do while you're praying, this is how you get power in your prayer. So, say, Pastor Dante, how do I get power in my prayer? That's a very good question. Okay. Uh, you get power in your prayer by being persistent. 
get power in your prayer by being persistent, knowing that he did it before. Knowing that if he fixed it before, knowing that if he changed it before, knowing that if he did it for my mama, oh, see, that's what you, you got to know that power is generational. Thank you, Jesus. That's why I don't worry about my kids. I, oh, hear me right here. That's why I don't worry. I got enough faith that it'll be transferable generationally. It'll transfer right down to my children and my children's children and my children's children's children because I believe in what God did before. And if he did it before, he'll do it again. And I start to pray. And God, if you did it before, and you did it for my mama, and you did it for my grandma, and you did it for my auntie, and all of a sudden, I get indignant about it. God, I know you are the one who will change my life. I've seen you. You are a life changer. You are a way maker. You are a miracle worker. I believe that if you did it before, you'll do it again. The last time I prayed, you came through. I want to say thank you for the last time. I want to say thank you for the last time because you did it the last time. I believe you'll do it this time. God, I believe you. And then all of a sudden, something happens on the inside of you. I want to teach you about a, a man, a, man a, a, a preacher named Gypsy Smith. A preacher named Gypsy Smith. But before I teach you about G Gypsy Smith, I want to teach you about a man named Honey. Somebody say Honey. Two, two quick things. I'm done. I'm done. Two quick things. Somebody come get this thing right here and bring me the... Uh, yeah, that's it. So Honey was uh, a first century uh, priest in the time of Jesus. He was a first century priest in the time of Jesus. And, and actually Jesus, uh, this is in ancient Judaism, Jesus would have known from his studies who Honey was. He would have had a clear understanding of who Honey was because he was a famous priest. The reason he was famous is because the children of Israel during that time had a drought. It was a, it was a famous drought. We don't think about droughts as much because we have rain. But in the absence of rain, all of a sudden you start thinking about rain. Some of y'all, that'll hit you later. <laughs> you don't think about it till you lack it. Maybe you should start praying about things you don't lack before you lack them. Instead of waiting till you lack it. I say, I, I'm preaching better than y'all shouting today. So Honey said this. He said, he said, he said this. He said, I believe in the God who makes the rain. I, I preached a message about this not too long ago. But it, it, I, he, he, said, he said, I'm going to start to pray until it rains. And the Bible said that he took a stick and he drew a circle around himself. And he said, I won't leave this space until the rain comes. I won't eat. I won't go nowhere. I'm going to stay right here until my prayers are answered. And the Bible said that he started to pray. And he started to pray. And he started to pray. Uh, sorry, this story is not in the Bible. I, I, let me be clear about that. This story is, it predates the Bible, okay? It predates, it predates the Nicene Council. So it, it predates the Bible. So, just, but get this, Honey said, I'm just going to stay right here and I'm just going to pray. I'm just going to pray in my circle. I'm just going to pray in my little circle. And, and he started to pray and he started to pray and he started to pray until eventually he felt a drop. And then that one drop turned into another drop. And then that one, that other drop, that second drop turned into another drop. And all of a sudden he said, okay, okay, God, if you gave me two or three drops, I know you can bring the rain. Sometimes you got to just stop and celebrate your two or three drops. Sometimes you just got to give God glory for your two or three drops. I don't have the abundance of rain, but I'll take these two or three drops right here. The Bible says that he stayed in it. He, now, now, he didn't quit when he got two or three drops. You come to church, you get to know Jesus, you get a little raise on your job, you start doing all right, get you a one bedroom. <laughs> and then you don't need God no more. He didn't stop when he got two or three drops. He stayed in that circle till he saw the rain come. 
Now, Gypsy, uh, Gypsy Smith is a preacher from 18, uh, about 1860, but he knew the story of Honey, and he would preach it often. He would talk about the story of Honey often. And so the, the, some of the famous preachers of the time, Gypsy Smith it was so famous that before, you know, before there was like national televised ministry, Gypsy Smith was one of the first, uh, it wasn't televised, but he was just nationally known. He would, he would, he would, you couldn't fly all over the world. He would boat all over the world and preach the gospel. Every y'all look him up. He's a real person. He would go boat all over the world and tell people. And so he was, he was the Billy Graham of their time. So important. He was so important and he so mattered. And a bunch of uh, uh, preachers came over to, to, to uh, Gypsy Smith and they said, Gypsy Smith. How do we get revival at our churches? We want to see revival in our houses. We want to see revival in our churches. And, we're, and, 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 and really what they were saying was, because a lot of times preachers have motives. Really what he was saying at the time was, that what they were saying was, how do we get more people at our church? How do we get more people to come? How do we get more people? How do we get more people? And, and, and they weren't really asking for a revival because a revival costs something. Revival always costs something. But what they were saying was this. Come on, KC. What they were saying was this. Get this. They were saying, I, I, I want more at my house. I, I, I want more in my, in my sanctuary. I want more people. I want more. I want more. And Gypsy Smith looked at them and he said, okay, I want you to do something. Go to your house. Find a room. Lock yourself in it. Draw a circle around yourself. Get chalk, put it on the floor, draw a circle around yourself. He said, draw a circle around yourself. He said, and then get on your knees and pray as hard as you can for revival in that circle. Wait, 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 I want revival at my church. I want to see people go crazy. I want to see, I want to see miracles. He said, yeah, 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 this is how you get it. Draw a circle around yourself. Some of y'all need to just draw a circle around yourself. Pray for revival right here in this circle. God, if you can make it rain in this circle, I know you can make it rain. If you can make it rain right here in this circle, if you can fix my heart, God, if you can change my circumstance, God, if you can keep me from being mad all the time or angry all the time or mean, can you, can, can you give me a revival in my circle, God? I'm just going to start praying right in my circle. If I can get a change in my circle, then I can put a circle around some other things. I missed that. If I can get a change in my circle, then I can put a, I, I can go in my kids' room and draw a circle. If I can get a change in my circle, then I could go in my bedroom and draw a circle around me and my wife. If I could get a change in my circle, then I can walk around my house. I, I could get a change right there in my house. If I could get revival in my circle, then I can walk around my school. I can walk around my community. I can walk around with my neighbors. I can walk around with my friends. And if I could get revival in my circle, then I could get revival in my city. But it starts right here. Do you believe that God could do it in your circle? Listen, if God can't change you, he can't change nothing around you. If God can't do it in your circle, then he can't do it. If he can't get a shifting in your circle. I want to be so serious about this. I want to be so serious about this. How can he give you a raise when he can't help you put cigarettes down? He's powerless right here, but powerful over here? No, there has to be the same power that'll give you a $2 raise will help you put down crack cocaine, will help you put down weed, will help you put down alcohol, will help you put the same. I gotta start drawing a circle. Last week we talked about Jericho and we talked about walking around the walls of Jericho and boy, it took everything within me to save this to this week. Cause y'all know I love to give the punchline too early. 
But this is what Joshua didn't realize, that he was Jericho. You're not walking around your enemy's walls, you're walking around your own. And if you can't break down these walls, you can't get what's behind it. If you can't break down these walls, if you can't get around these walls, if you can't pray your way around these walls, if you can't shout your way around these walls, it's easy to walk around the church. It's no walls here. It's when you get home and you got to walk around the wall of depression. God, why do I always feel like everybody's against me? Why do I always feel like I'm alone? And, and the Bible keeps telling me that I'm not alone. That no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That no man by any means can harm me. But I got to draw a circle around. I'm my own Jericho. I got to circle myself. I got to pray around myself. Yeah, we talked about it all the way. Now I'm putting it all back together. I got to dig around myself yeah remember I'm the tree I gotta build around myself I gotta fortify myself yes there is an enemy yes the enemy intends to harm you yes the enemy intends to take something from you you gotta fortify yourself build around it I can't listen to everything I can't watch everything when it gets to a certain point I gotta flip it to the other channel until I flip it hey I, maybe you can I can't I gotta build around myself something greater on the inside of me. And when I build around it, I gotta remember to give God praise around it. God, I thank you, God. I thank you for what you built. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you. And all of a sudden, when I start giving God praise around it, and when I start saying thank you, God, and when I start communicating with God, then the walls that I built for myself, oh, hear me right here, the walls that I built to keep you out. The same walls I built to keep you out have locked me in. And all of a sudden, those walls start breaking down. All of a sudden, those walls start breaking down. All of a sudden, those walls start breaking down. I want to help you with something. If you can't do it around yourself, if you can't circle yourself, then you're going to miss the opportunity to circle your kids, to circle your family. Your kids gonna be who you are. They're not gonna do what you say. They're gonna do what you do. That's why I ain't worried about mine. Because eventually they're gonna line up with what I do. This, this is what the Bible says. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he gets old, he will not depart from it. But I want you to hear something right here because God is encircling you with his love. He's encircling you with his love. He's encircling you with his patience. He's encircling you with his glory. But he is asking for you to, to just get revival in your circle. Get revival in your circle. Right now, every, right where you are, everybody's standing on their feet. I want to see your hands lifted. If that's you today, if you say, God, I, I need revival in my little circle, God. Surround me, God. Surround me. I need revival in my, I need revival in my circle, God. I need a change in my circle. I need a change. I keep asking. I, I, I keep saying I need new friends. I need a new me. I don't need new friends. I need a new me, God. If I had a new me, if I was a new me, I'd attract new friends. If I was a different me, I'd have a different financial situation. But I got to circle myself. There's some stuff that I don't know about you that God does. Right now, right where you are, I want you to just give it away to him. Right where you are, just start giving it up right now. Open up your mouth and just say, it's yours, God. You can have it. It's yours, God. You can have it. It's yours, God. You can have it. Spirit, come now. Break our walls down. Spirit, come now. Break the walls down. Spirit, come now. Break the walls down. Now, now this is what I need. I want you to hear me right here because the only person who can shift something in a different place from the place that they are in is a priest. Right now, there's a priest in Italy. There's a priest in Italy that if he shifts, if he says something, the entire world will shift because of it. But I want you to know that he's not a greater priest than you are. 
He's not a greater priest than you are. And if you speak it right now, if you speak it, I believe it's shifting at your house. I believe it's shifting at your job. I believe it's shifting in your relationship. I believe it's shifting with your husband. But you got to speak it out of your mouth right now. And the Bible says that when they had walked around Jericho seven times on the seventh day, they released a sound. And the sound that they released made every wall come down. If, if you believe the walls are falling down, can you just release a sound today? 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 Can you release a sound that'll break the walls at your house? That'll break the...